this all on my own. No, I know I'm no Superman. I'm no Superman. Hey Ravens, welcome to this week's edition of ONW Now. We're your hosts. I'm Ashley Couch alongside Elena Gray. It's that time of year again. Homecoming court nominations will be held during this Thursday's lunch. Stop by the election table in the comments to put your vote in for one boy and girl. The top three boys and girls of each grade will become homecoming court candidates. With homecoming approaching, <coughs> the signups for Powder Puff are available, juniors versus seniors. Junior signups are hanging on Miss Freeman's door, and senior signups are hanging on Mr. McNanny's door. Come out and show us your skills. With the 12th anniversary of 9-11 passing, a new memorial has been built in Overland Park. One of our very own faculty had the opportunity to play at the ceremony. Molly Murphy has more on the story. Last week marked the 12th anniversary of 9-11. A new memorial in Overland Park has been put in place to honor those who have lost their lives in 9-11 and those who have been affected by the tragedy. Our very own assistant band director, Mr. Maddox, was asked to play a ceremonial piece called Taps to commence the memorial ceremony. It signifies um, just a moment of remembrance for those who have lost their lives. It's a really ceremonial piece, um, very somber, um, and it's just, it's just used a lot to remember those that have fallen. Um, so that's why this event where I'm going to play it, it's, it's such a huge deal to have someone live to do it there. He was approached to perform by friend and firefighter. The memorial has also added many new tributes to honor the day. Uh, I was approached by a friend of mine who's a firefighter for the Overland Park Fire Department. His name is Trevor Miller. And he had asked me if I would be able to play this live because if they weren't going to have someone playing taps at the ceremony, they would have to use a recording of a trumpet player playing it, which this is an event that really needs someone live. Last year was the first year that this memorial and museum was opened. Um, it has a piece of the World Trade Center, a beam from the building. It's about 14 feet tall, 5,600 pounds, and they brought it from New York City from the rubble at Ground Zero, transported it all uh, across the United States to Overland Park, and he was the one who kind of led this charge of getting this piece here to build a memorial. If you'd like to visit this memorial, it is located at Overland Park Fire Training Center off 123rd and Antioch. Thanks, Molly. You may have heard about Young Life as you pass through the halls. Isabel Lobby takes us inside a Young Life meeting to tell us more. Olathe Young Life is officially kicking off its first year at Northwest. It started with Muckfest on Monday, September 9th at Stoll Park. Over 20 Ravens showed up to battle against East Young Life with shaving cream, ramen noodles, flower bombs, and paint. Trip McGee, ONW Young Life leader, describes Monday's events. The best part of everything uh, was the shaving cream because they had like six trash cans full of shaving cream and you just kind of went and just destroyed people with it. So The first meeting was on Monday, September 16th with about 20 students attending. Young Life meetings take place every Monday at a different student at Olathe Northwest House. Meetings include singing a variety of popular songs, fun games, and about a 10-minute lesson. McGee describes what Young Life is about. Young Life is a club that a lot of people in public schools go to that maybe if they're afraid of what church is and what church stands for, it's a good entrance and you get to hang out with people that are in your hallways. The first Young Life group started in California in 1996. The spirit spread across the nation and clubs and schools have sprung up everywhere. Before Young Life was at Northwest, it was going on in Shawnee Mission Schools and at Olathe East. Trent McGee and Peggy Bayer lead the Olathe Northwest Young Life. McGee explains why he likes Young Life. It's got to be the kids. Like, I wouldn't do this if I didn't like uh, hanging out with high school kids. Like, I'm probably the most immature 25-year-old you've ever met, so. Young Life not only has meetings, but also events like late night summer camp and other fun activities throughout the year. Senior Brady Armstrong leads a Young Life campaigners group for girls. Armstrong explains what this group is like. like our school life, and we just talk about, like, our struggles and um, we talk about how we want our lives to look and um, how to encourage each other throughout the week. Joining Young Life is as simple as showing up to the meetings. Talk to your friends. There's a lot of kids obviously involved in Young Life and know about Young Life and uh, they can talk to them and come with them and the leaders will pick you up or whatever you want to do. It's uh, You just kind of show up, sign up to the text alerts and get coming. The first official club meeting is this coming Monday at 7.46 p.m. You can go on the Olathe Young Life Facebook page or Twitter for more information. 
Thanks, Isabel. Last Friday, we had Joe Cole come to Olathe Northwest to give us an inspirational speech. Candace Hayes has more on the story. Last Friday, students at ONW were given the opportunity to hear Joe Cole, follow-up presenter for Rachel's Challenge, speak about spreading the act of kindness. Joe Cole's professional development speaker for Rachel's Challenge focused on the three key habits that change people's lives in his presentation. Prior to working with Rachel's Challenge, Coles has taught and counseled students for 35 years. Coles got started with Rachel's Challenge after presenting at the Foundation's first summit. After that, the Foundation asked the speaker to work for it. Being from Coldwater, Kansas, Coles has presented at numerous Kansas schools as well as around the nation. When speaking about Olathe Northwest, he sees nothing but potential. I think you have an awesome school. I, I think you have so many people that care, so many people that, uh, that want to make a difference. But uh, the thing I always tell great schools is if you, if you don't continue trying to be great, and then, then we slip. And so even though you have an unbelievable school, we can always get a little bit better. Junior Carrington DeBose learned a lot from the presentation. Um, I learned to be positive and make positive reactions. Chloe Krause, a junior golfer at ONW, also learned from the presentation. Um, I learned from the presentation that you always need to respect others and to have that kind of feel for others and not to leave anyone out and that, you know, everyone's going to have that situation once in a while, but you just have to figure out how to get through it. Olathe Northwest thanks Joe Coles for visiting our school and bettering our community. Thanks, Candace. Now let's take it to game day. Hey Ravens, welcome to this week's edition of Game Day Northwest. I'm Drake Watkins alongside Tyler Sotart. Last week the football team took on crosstown rival late the East, but fell short in the second half. Grant Nicholson has more. The Raven faithful rode in force to support the football team last Friday as the Ravens took on Olathe East. The Ravens fell behind early, but this bobbling catch by Chase Gillen helped to set up a Raven touchdown. Adam Harder took a handoff seven yards to Pater for the Ravens for the Ravens' first score of the game. The Ravens' defense played extremely well all game, forcing several turnovers. This interception by defensive lineman Mitch Holsinger gave the Ravens amazing field position late in the second quarter. The Ravens were able to capitalize on the mistake and score twice with under two minutes to go in the second quarter. The first on a Jack Hatsfeld quarterback sneak, and then only 15 seconds later when Jack Hatsfeld found Nathan Power on a 15-yard slant route, and the Ravens were only down three. The Ravens were denied another score with only 10 seconds to go in the half when Adam Harder was deemed to have gone out of bounds after he took the Ravens' third interception of the night, 40 yards to the goal line. Unfortunately, halftime marked the end of the fireworks from the Ravens, and Olathe East scored twice in the second half to give the Ravens their first loss of, of the season. The Ravens' next game is an away game at Shawnee Mission East. Be sure to go out and cheer on your Ravens. Thanks, Grant. But win or lose, playing football is no easy task, and to be great, it requires more than just going through the motions. The volleyball team had a tournament this past weekend and placed second as they went 5-1 and one overall. The team takes on Sumner Academy next week. Be sure to go out and support the volleyball team. That's all for this week's edition of Game Day Northwest. I'm Drake Watkins for Tyler Sotart signing off. Northwest is known for their spirit, even in assemblies. This past assembly, we learned a new fight song. Let's take it to Jake Watkins for more. Ravens. Hey Ragin' Ravens is the name of the fight song the Raven Band will use this year in addition to the old one. The new anthem is the same as the one that LSU uses. The song comes from Louisiana State University. It's, uh, they call it Hey Fightin' Tigers and it's their anthem for the football season uh, down in Louisiana. And we thought it would be really nice to celebrate the 10 years of great football that we enjoy out at Seaback uh, by having an anthem to celebrate our football team and uh, the wonderful atmosphere that we're looking forward to creating on Friday nights. Over the summer, the band took a lot of time preparing for the upcoming school year. 
a lot of time was put into this. We spent a lot of time this summer getting it all arranged, making sure that the parts were cared for so that it sounded good and was uh, sound for our kids to play. And indeed, it's not an easy thing for our students to do, playing a collegiate tune that's brand new to our library. But they've stepped up. They've loved it. Um, and it's, we put in a lot of time to, uh, to make it sound right and represent our school well. So far, the band has received a great response from the students and staff. Uh, yeah, there's been a good response. We have the cheerleaders, the dance team, ROC all involved already. In them. It's been a great response. The kids love playing it, um, especially uh, it was wonderful to see our student body at the pep assembly and on uh, Friday night, our first home game, participating up on their feet before the game started. Uh, singing and having a good time and cheering on our team. Listen for the fight song at the next home football game. For OW Now, I'm Drake Watkins. Back to you guys for the desk. Thanks, Drake. That's all we have for this week's edition of OW Now. For Ashley Couch, I'm Elena Gray. Have a great week, Ravens.